Um, welcome to the presentation of our AI stats paper, Tabular Lamp Fee Shot Classification of Tabular Data with Large Language Models. My name is Stefan. I'm an MD PhD student at the University of Münster, and this is work done at MIT. Um, my collaborators are Alejandro Hunter Moniker and Professor David Sontag from MIT, and Professor Chari Yang from the University of Münster. So, what's the motivation of this work? Uh, we deal with tabular data, and there's a simplified example given on the left side here, which is inspired from the adult or income data set that a lot of papers are using. Um, so our roles here are age, um, country of origin, and highest educational degree. And we can see and the prediction task is to predict whether a person earns more or less than $50,000 a year. And we can see we have um, two labeled examples, and for the third row highlighted in blue, we want to do a prediction. And a very common approach that people would take is to use a supervised learning algorithm. Um, so we would use the labeled rows for training, and then for the bluish row, we want to do a prediction. And to do that, we have to transform this tabular row into a vector representation our algorithm can work with, as for instance shown on the slide. And uh, based on this, we can do a prediction. However, using supervised learning approaches for tabular data has some potential downsides. Uh, first of all, a lot of um, tabular data sets have relatively few columns, so there's little training signal, um, especially if you compare it to the number of pixels in a vision data set or the number of words in an NLP data set, and also um, considering the sizes of the data sets. Um, also, a lot of tabular data sets have mixed data types. Uh, also, as we can see here, age is continuous, the country is a categorical variable, and some supervised learning algorithms struggle um, with, um, with training on this kind of data. And as a consequence, um, we identified three reviews in our paper uh, that if they that look at um, several tabular data sets and show that boosted tree models like LightGBM or XJBoost still outperform um, deep learning methods tailored for tabular data. Um, so what's the approach we want to take in this work? In this work, we want to uh, leverage pre-trained large language models for the, the task of tabular classification. So how would that look like? So for the row we're interested in now, um, we have to move it into text space because that's where these large language models operate. And one example is shown in this uh, white box. So we could just describe this row entry. Uh, the person is age 78, she's from Spain and has a master's. And then we add something um, which is called a prompt. We basically ask for the label we're interested in. So does this person earn more than $50,000? Yes or no? And we get a prediction. And why is that uh, a worthwhile approach? Uh, our primary motivation is that we want to use prior knowledge encoded in these models. So they were trained in an unsupervised fashion on basically all the text on the internet. So we could hope that, for instance, they picked up some associations for an academic degree and maybe a higher income. So for instance, that a master's degree could lead to a higher income. And we could use this prior knowledge to even in even in cases where we have few training data um, or few columns to train with, make good predictions. And in addition to that, we could actually do zero-shot predictions. So even if we don't have any training data, that's something supervised learning algorithms uh, couldn't do. So what's the, what are the methods that we used? In this work, we focused on studying different serialization techniques. So techniques of um, moving this tabular row into a text repre representation and seeing uh, what effect this, these different civilizations have on the performance. We considered nine tabular data sets and we used the T0 language models, which is uh, a prompted version of the T5 language models uh, model published by Google. Um, we consider different cases uh, with no training data, so zero shot or some training data. In the case of training data, we fine tune this T0 language model with a method called TFU. As I already mentioned, um, we focused on studying different serializations. And here's a list of all the serializations we consider. Um, for all of them, I give an example on the right side so that it's um, easier to, to follow uh, what we look at. So the first one is the list template. So it's simply a list of column names and values, as you can see on the right. So H78, country Spain, degree masters, and then our prompt. Um, so that's very simple. That's also something a lot of papers using LLMs use as a default serialization. The next one is only slightly more complex. So we use the pattern, the column name is value to get a more fluent text. So 
this gives us like a very simple pattern um, to get a text. So we can see, for example, this is the age of 78, the country is Spain, the degrees masters. The motivation is to get a serialization that is closer to a fluent text so that it's hopefully closer to the training distribution of the language model we use for prediction and uh, we would get a better um, prediction performance. For the next three serializations, we actually use an LLM for the serialization itself. So we use a table to text model, um, we use T0 itself for serialization and GPT-3. And what you usually get from these models is e a even more fluent text. Um, so the example given on the right, we see it's not only simple sentences anymore, but like a more coherent text. The person is 78 years old, uh, comes from Spain. The person holds a, a master's degree. So again, the hope is to get a serialization even closer to the training distribution, boosting the performance even more. In addition to these five serializations, we looked at three different ablations to study um, why our model method is working or not. Um, the first one is list only values. So it's a list where we omit the column names. Uh, we, did, uh, we studied this ablation to, to check whether the model uses the column names for prediction. The next one is list permuted names. So we change the position of the column names in the serialization consistently across examples. You can see the first row, for instance, the value of H78 is now associated with a name degree. We did this to check whether the model uses the correct uh, name value pairs. And lastly, um, which is probably the hardest ablation, is list permuted values, where we permuted the values consistently across examples. Um, so for instance, we mapped the age 70, uh, 78 to 32, uh, Spain to Japan, and masters to high school. And that's important. We mapped master's degree, uh, all master degrees that occur in the table to high school. So we did for all examples. And this totally contradicts, or that's the aim that it totally contradicts the, the prior knowledge learned in the, in the model. So that's also what we want to check. Does the model actually use prior knowledge for its predictions? Um, let's come to the results. So this is the results for the different serializations we've seen on the previous slide. I want to go through them step by step. Uh, we can see on the x-axis the number of training examples. So zero means zero shot, no training. Um, and then we increase it step by step. On the y-axis, we see the average performance across all the nine data sets we studied. And let's start with the static serialization. So the list of this very simple text um, template. And we can see that they consistently perform best. So these are the blue and the orange curves. And we can even see that the, the blue, the text template where we have these sentences, is slightly better in the zero-shot case. So that's nice. So if it's closer to text, we actually get a better performance. Using LLMs for serializations, we see we get worse, uh, a worse performance. And the trend is as follows. GPT-3 is the most powerful LLM we use for serialization. And this gave us, um, in comparison to the other LLMs used for serialization, the best performance. And um, this was also our intuition. So GPT-3 is usually best at serializing a tabular row. So the question arises why it's still giving us a worse performance. Our hypothesis is that um, GPT-3 sometimes hallucinates, so it adds information, or it leaves out some features, um, degrading the performance when using the language model for prediction. Um, then the ablations. So using only feature values, uh, we can see we get, uh, this is the pink curve, we get slightly worse performance for fewer shots, and uh, we get close to the best serializations for more shots, however. So we can see that um, tab LLM uses the feature names. So if we omit them, we get a worse performance. Um, for the next one, list permuted names, which is the gray curve, we see a very similar trend, but it gets a bit, it gets as good at the best serializations for more training examples. So we can see that the ordering is relevant, especially in the few shot setting. But if we have more examples, it doesn't matter where the column names occur and the permutation is not that uh, problematic. Um, lastly, list permuted values, which uh, gives us the worst performance. Uh, this is this greenish curve, um, indicating that tab LLM relies on the correct feature values, so it's really using prior knowledge. Surprisingly, however, um, all of them converge and also the last ablation, which uh, we think is quite interesting. So we can see that the model can learn new associations. So even if we permute the values, we can get a good performance. And also this general trend that it converges indicates that the effect of the serialization 
gets less if you have more training examples. Um, next, um, here are the results for TAP LLM versus um, several different baselines. And the blue curve is TAP LLM with the best serialization from the previous slide. And the first thing we can notice is that we get a pretty good zero shot performance of 0.65 EOC so without any training. And the green uh, cross you can also see for zero shot is GPD-3 uh, in the zero shot scenario. And that's quite interesting. That's not something we've expected that T0 performs as good as GPD-3 in the zero shot um, setting. Now we can see that the performance of TAP LLM um, increases with more shots as we've seen on the previous slide. And until eight shots, it's actually better than all the baselines we've included. And then for more shots, some of the baselines um, show a better performance. Let's look at them um, in, um, in groups again. So for the, the three models, like GBM and XJ Boost, we can see that TAP LLM, the blue curve, actually is on uh, outperforms or is on par until 128 training examples, which we, which we think is quite nice because these uh, boosted trees were the state of the art so far for tabular data. Then for the neural baselines we're showing here, we can see that TAP LLM beats several of these neural models tailored for tabular data. So for instance, the pink curve TAPNet or the gray curve node, we can see that TAP LLM uh, consistently outperforms, sense, which, uh, outperforms them, which we think is a, a quite nice result. And then lastly, um, we can see that TAP PFM, which is a recently introduced architecture Bayesian neural network trained on synthetic data, is consistently the strongest baseline of our experiment. So this is this greenish curve on the top. Then we did some introspection of our uh, method um, to check whether TAP LLM actually uses this prior knowledge. Um, so we did this with the ablation already, but this is like an additional experiment. So what we did here is for the income data set to compare TAP LLM in the zero shot case, so no training, versus the logistic regression model trained on 40,000 training examples. And we check the importance of the features. And what you can see here are the um, five features with the highest weight of TAP LLM and the five features with the lowest weight. And what we can see here is that the, the five highest features, first of all, they make sense. So it's the capital gain. So the, the money a person gained from capital incomes and higher educational degrees. Um, so that kind of matches our intuition. So TAP LLM seems to use, seems to use prior knowledge here. And interestingly, it is also very close to what logistic regression determines as the most important features. So if you train in 40,000 examples, it comes up with very similar features as the most important ones. And remember, TAP LLM has seen no training examples. So that's part of the model encoded in the LLM. And there's a similar trend, but not that strong for the five lowest rated features. So that's interesting because it really confirms that TAP LLMs leverages prior knowledge for its predictions. So let's come to the um, discussion and conclusion. So what we've seen on the previous slide, but also with our ablations, is that it's really possible to leverage prior knowledge learned by pre-trained language models for tabular data. Um, we've seen that TAP LLM outperforms many state-of-the-art models, um, and that's something I haven't, noticed, uh, haven't um, mentioned yet without any parameter tuning. Um, We've seen for the serializations that simple textual serializations, so this list or the sentence serialization, proved most beneficial. Um, and our ablations have confirmed that TAP LLM utilizes the column names, uh, the feature values, so the prior knowledge, um, and the correct association of column names and feature values. Um, on the downside, however, um, TAP LLM has a much higher prediction cost because uh, under the hood, you have to run a, a large language models. And one might think that um, we need a meaningful textual serialization. For instance, if you don't have column names, this probably might uh, degrade the performance of the language model. However, there was parallel work going on with GPT-3, which first showed very similar results. And they did something more extreme than us. They actually fed uh, MNIST, so pixel values of written digits, to the language model written as text. And they also uh, they got even reasonable performance for this really hard data set. So this gives us hope that these language models are also applicable in this very difficult scenarios. Um, if you want to have more details um, or see ex additional experiments done on a real world longitudinal healthcare data set, please check out the paper with a QR code or visit us at our poster. And we are always open for questions. Thank you very much.